So what's the Fourier transform of DC? What's the Fourier transform of a constant signal, a signal with a constant amplitude? So intuitively, we know the answer should be an impulse at zero hertz. So we, we, we sort of expect the answer should look something like this because of what we know from Fourier the theory. So from the Fourier series, we know that um, the A0 term, the A0 term, is the DC value. So at zero hertz, we expect that to be um, the DC component. But how can we show that? How can we find the Fourier transform of DC? So let's consider a, a simple DC signal with an amplitude of 1. And let's try applying the Fourier transform or the definition of the Fourier transform. So f of omega equals the integral of our signal f of t e to the minus j omega t dt. And our signal is simply 1. So I'll just erase that and replace with one. So that was the definition of the Fourier transform. So that's, that's how we would start. But then what? How, how do we then proceed from there? It looks straightforward, but actually it isn't. Let me show you. The integral, oh, we can integrate straight away because it's, it's really easy. It's just minus 1 over j omega times e to the minus j omega t minus infinity to infinity. That's the easy bit. It gets harder when you want to substitute limits because then you have e to the minus infinity minus e to the minus minus infinity. And we can remove the minus minus. This is the term that causes us difficulty. We can't process that. And this gives us an infinite value and that isn't helpful. So we actually haven't been able to find the Fourier transform by applying the definition. So we look for something else, another way of doing it. And because we know what the answer is, there is an intuitive solution. So if in, instead of applying the Fourier transform, um, we try applying the inverse Fourier transform. So let's start with the definition of the inverse Fourier transform. If I said f of t equals 1 over 2 pi f of omega, let me write that clearly, omega e to the j omega t d omega. Now f of t is known. My problem is finding f of omega. So this is what I don't know, and this is what I do know. That's my constant, 1. So what do I put in here that when integrated, multiplied by an exponential, will give me 1? Well, we can exploit the sifting property of the delta Dirac function. says, if you remember, that if you integrate from minus infinity to infinity, some function, we usually use time, but I will use omega, times an impulse at omega naught, 
then the answer will be x of omega naught. Let me move that slightly to the left. This is a really important um, result. What it's telling us is that omega equals omega naught, and if you substitute that in there, that gives us our final answer. So that's the sifting property. We, we looked at this several weeks ago. Now, if we go back to our question, we could insert a unit impulse instead of f of omega. But our unit impulse would be um, at, uh, at omega equals zero, so it would be delta of omega. And I'd have to scale that by 2 pi. Now, imagine... If that, if that went into there instead of f of omega, would that solve our problem? So you'd have to ask ourselves if, so what value would we put in there for the unit impulse not to be zero? And the answer would be omega equals zero. And then that zero would be would go in there instead of omega. And that would give us e to the power of zero equals one. And the two pi would cancel with the two pi, and we would end up with one. So that seems to work neatly for us. So if I just tidy that up a little bit, I can now I can now write it like this. I can say that 1 over 2 pi times the integral of 2 pi impulse at omega e to the j omega t d omega equals one. That is my f of t that I started with, and therefore this will be my f of omega. So I could say f of omega equals 2 pi, and this is exactly what we expected to see. So we started this question expecting the answer to be an impulse at zero hertz. So we expected that impulse there, and we now know that the strength or the weight or the area of this impulse is 2 pi. So the Fourier transform of a DC signal is a, a unit impulse or an impulse with a strength or a weight equal to 2 pi multiplied by the DC value, because in this question, the DC value had an amplitude of 1. And to do this, to find this, we used the sifting property of the delta Dirac function.